Hello, my name is Amy Smith and I'm Vice President and Executive Director at the Clearinghouse Payments Authority. I'm here with you today to talk about Same Day ACH on the CU Compliance Connection by InfoSight. The ACH payment system has been around since 1974. It's a next day payment system. It settles on a next day basis. So it's originated today, it's effective tomorrow. It's a batch and forward system that carries both debits and credits and can affect both consumer and corporate transactions. The type of accounts that it can apply to, checking, savings, GL, and loan accounts. Common uses of the ACH payment system for consumers would be things like direct deposit of payroll or direct payment where they've authorized someone to come in routinely and debit their account for um, routine bills. Uh, it's also used by businesses for corporate trade payments between businesses, so B2B transactions where uh, trades and either services or um, our products are being uh, purchased. Um, there are currently two ACH operators in the United States. One is the Federal Reserve Bank and one is the Clearinghouse, my organization. Last but not least, there's a national organization called NACHA. NACHA actually establishes and governs the, um, the rules associated with the ACH payment system. We are now getting ready to introduce a new flavor of ACH. And to be clear, traditional ACH, that next day payment system I just described, that will continue to exist. But coming up in September, and we'll talk about that date in just a minute, we're actually going to introduce a new flavor of ACH that moves faster. And here's what it looks like. The two ACH operators have come together and they've added two new same day processing windows. As compliance professionals, it's important for all of you to understand and to speak with the operations folks within your credit union so that they understand that this is going to be an operational change for you and it's important that you understand. So as you can see, there'll be a morning settlement window um, and there will also be an afternoon settlement window. What's important to understand about Same Day ACH is all financial institutions in the United States who receive ACH transactions will be required to receive Same Day ACH transactions and make those available on a Same Day basis. Um, the RDFIs will make those funds available uh, by 5 p.m. their local time. And it, let me pause for a minute and remind you that um, here in the United States, every financial institution is an RDFI, a re receiving depository financial institution. There are some financial institutions who choose to be ODFIs, originating depository financial institutions. That's a choice, but that means that you're hosting transactions and files into the ACH. That existed with the traditional ACH. It also exists in the same day ACH environment. Next, what I'll talk about is um, the reasoning essentially behind Same Day ACH. We really want to make sure as an industry that we provide um, Same Day ACH to all of the financial institutions in the United States. Uh, we're looking for a ubiquitous uh, Same Day capability um, for virtually any ACH transaction if people choose to um, leverage this. Businesses, companies, consumers, governments, um, you name it, may want to, in fact, move these transactions faster. Um, same day ACH does build on that existing next day ACH network. It leverages the same capabilities, uh, the same clearing and settlement uh, 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 mechanisms that are in place today. It's just moving ACH transactions faster in the case where um, that may be necessary. So let's talk a little bit about the phased approach. Um, to implementing same day ACH. Because this is a significant departure from what ACH has been since 1974, we're actually taking a phased approach. So on, a, on September 23rd um, of 2016 will be the first phase. This will be credits only, um, and the transactions cannot exceed $25,000 in value, any one transaction. Uh, you can see that um, what the settlement windows and deadlines are, settlement times, and what um, the receiving depository financial inst institution has to do in order to make those funds available um, to the account holders. So that's phase one. No debits can move in phase one, strictly credits, forward moving credits, same day, quicker. And we'll talk a little bit about, um, about the use cases in, in a minute. Phase two is September 15th of 2017. So we're gonna wait a whole year before we introduce faster debits because as you can imagine, 
as compliance professionals, you understand that there's a whole lot more risk associated with moving debits. And if we're going to move those faster, we, faster, we want to make sure that we get it right with credits first. So we're going to wait a year. September 15th of 2017 is phase two. And then ultimately, approximately six months later, we will go with phase three. Um, and what happens in phase three is that we'll have both debits and credits, but we will also um, uh, accelerate the, um, the settlement responsibility that financial institutions have. Um, you know, the use case for same-day ACH uh, represents, um, you know, potentially 1.4 billion transactions here in the United States. So this is pretty significant. Um, there's a lot of information out there. You may want to search, um, you know, NACHA's website. There's actually a same-day ACH information center at NACHA.org. You're welcome to go out there and take a look and look at all the various use cases. But this diagram just shows you, in general, um, some of the use cases. There are approximately 10 primary use cases and over 60 sub-use cases, examples where moving an ACH transaction on a same-day basis would be better than a next-day basis. So, you know, you can see the quadrants here. We have consumer-to-consumer -consumer transactions where it might be person-to-person. Um, business to consumer, business to business, and then ultimately consumer to business transactions. So um, as you think about same day ACH within your financial institution, think about these use cases and where you might and on the receiving depository financial institution side be receiving these and if you're an ODFI where you might choose to host these transactions as same day transactions. Same day ACH does carry a fee. Uh, what will happen is on the because there is additional burden on the side of the RDFI, the re receiving financial institution, ODFIs will actually pay a fee for each transaction that moves on a same day basis and is settled on a same day basis. So that fee has been identified as 5.2 cents. Um, that will move via the ACH operators, whether it's the Federal Reserve Bank or the Clearinghouse as your operator and it will move as part of that settlement process. So you'll see those fees actually reflected on your operator um, settlement uh, uh, invoices that you receive from them. Um, but again, it's, it's paid by the RDFI to the, um, uh, paid to the RDFI from the ODFI. Um, RDFIs do not pay a fee associated with that. If you plan to be an ODFI of same-day ACH transactions, you're going to want to take this into account. Because now, if a transaction moves on a same-day basis and you're originating it, you will pay 5.2 cents. So that'll increase your operating cost. You'll have to think about whether or not you're going to recover that from the businesses that you're moving these transactions on behalf of. So you know, keep that, definitely keep that in mind. Technical uh, highlights associated with same-day ACH that I think are important for you to um, understand. One of the things that we're identifying as we go into same-day ACH is there's something on an ACH file called an effective entry date. The effective entry date is the wish date of when the file should settle. Effective entry dates are used today. Right? So if I originate a file today and I want it to actually post to somebody's account tomorrow, I'll have an effective entry date in my file of tomorrow. Ultimately, the operator will determine what the settlement date is because they, they, they're responsible for settlement. However, there's oftentimes currently, as I stand here today, effective entry dates of accidentally today. Right, So in the current environment with regular ACH, if I'm the operator and I receive something with an effective entry date of today because ACH is a next day payment system, it's going to settle tomorrow. But if your originators accidentally send you a file after we implement same day ACH and it has an effective entry date of today and it meets the windows that are out there, you may actually affect a same day ACH transaction. And that's fine but it's going to incur that 5.2 cent uh, fee. So one of the recommendations that we're making to financial institutions throughout the country is to take a look right now before you implement, before September, uh, take a look at the files that you're receiving and make sure that the effective entry dates for transactions that are supposed to occur tomorrow actually have tomorrow's effective entry date. If it's got today's, and you meet those deadlines, then suddenly you're going to be originating same-day ACH. 
Um, there's also some optional um, methodology associated with um, origination files. So, you know, you can certainly take um, a deeper dive into that and see whether or not you want to use um, some of those optional fields. Uh, most $0 transactions will be eligible for same-day ACH in phase one as well. So you want to take that in consideration. $0 transactions might be a pre-notification transaction that's just testing to make sure that a consumer has actually offer, um, offered the correct routing number and account number, say for a direct deposit transaction. Um, and then the most important thing, and I can't say this enough, is as a receiving depository financial institution, which pretty much every financial institution in this country is an RDFI, RDFIs are required to receive and post same-day ACH transactions, but you will not be required to do same-day returns. Again, everything in the ACH could move faster if it meets these windows, but if you receive a same-day transaction, you still have the same right of return that you've had in the past with traditional ACH transactions. So it doesn't accelerate it unless you want it to. File dating, um, you know, I, again, um, this is very, very important. That, that stale date or ineffective um, effective entry date, that invalid effective entry date can really accelerate. Um, so this is really something that, that we want to make sure that you um, take a look at because this could certainly get you um, and your originators in trouble if you are an ODFI. You know, sort of summarizing, you know, what I'm saying here is, uh, you know, we, we kind of use this analogy, the same day ACH train, right? So you have to have the right ticket and you have to be at the station at the right time. So if the file has the current date as the effective entry date, then it's eligible for, it could potentially be seen as the same day ACH transaction, whether you wanted it to or not. And if the file gets delivered to one of the ACH operators within the correct windows, as we talked about earlier, it's going to be a same day ACH transaction. So whether you intended it or not, you're going to be moving an ACH transaction faster. As you likely know, uh, there's something called ACH reversals. Those exist today with traditional ACH. They will also exist in same-day ACH. A reversal is where a file has gone out and suddenly a company contacts you and says, ah, you know, there's something wrong with that file. Can you pull that file back? And it's pulled back on a best, best efforts basis. Um, that exists again today. It will also exist under same day. However, with same day ACH, you need to remember that all of the criteria associated with same day applies here, right? So it's got to have the right effective entry date. It needs to be $25,000 or less. Um, they will, uh, it, it will carry the, um, the same day ACH fees. So the ODFI will pay the RDFI 5.2 cents for these transactions. Um, so it, it is important for you to understand, and it still applies that um, in phase one, we're, we're credits only, so the debit that reverses an ACH credit will not be eligible for same-day ACH under, um, under phase one. So as you think about it, it's not that often that you're actually going to uh, do an ACH reversal, but it's important for you to understand from an exception processing standpoint that it, that it applies here as well. Phase one, uh, funds availability in phase one, RDFIs must, be, um, must make those funds available um, at the closing of your processing day. Um, so, you know, that, that applies to phase one. It also applies to phase two. So whatever your processing day is, you know, at the end of your day, those funds must be made available. What does that mean? That means that the funds need to be in, in the receiver's account, whether it's a consumer or a business. Uh, those funds must be available for them to withdraw over the counter or available to them at the ATM uh, or available to them via their debit cards or credit cards, uh, depending on where those transactions have posted. By the time we get to phase three, which is March of 2018, um, it will specifically be 5 p.m. local time. So if your definition of your processing day is 7 p.m., then you need to prepare by March of 2018 for that to actually be a hard 5 p.m. Um, of your, um, your, the receiving institution's local time. So a couple different things for RDFIs to think about. You know, again, um, you know, receipt of same-day ACH transactions 
are, is not optional. Uh, this is something that you have to be able to do and make funds available. Many of you are already doing that work today from an operations perspective. You are likely testing either with your processor or directly with the ACH operator, depending on what your connectivity is. Um, you need to make sure that um, you've got the, uh, your time frames correct, you've got procedures in place, you need to think about funds availability, uh, returns, sending notifications of change if something you're able to post something but you want to pass along some correcting information to the ODFI. Um, you know, you really have to think about that exception processing um, associated with same day. Um, if you have a processor that enables you, uh, making sure that the processor is um, ready um, uh, to support you in this because September 23rd, 2016 is D-Day for same day ACH. Um, but also staffing resources, right? So how are we staffed today in our operations area? And are we, as a receiving institution of same-day ACH transactions, prepared to meet the various settlement windows and then ultimately make funds available, uh, available by, by close of business? So uh, hopefully you're all thinking about that. And have you updated your contingency plan? Um, you know, it's, it's probably a very sound plan right now uh, relative to traditional ACH, but have you incorporated same-day ACH into that contingency plan? On the ODFI side, you know, should we? Should we? Remember, as an RDFI, you must receive and make available same-day ACH transactions effective September 23rd of 2016. As an ODFI, you don't have to do this. Uh, you do not have to offer same-day ACH. Uh, you can remain an ODFI, an originating depository financial institution of traditional ACH transactions. You do not have to make this available. And, and uh, additionally, you don't have to make it available to everybody. So you could decide to offer same-day ACH trans, uh, transactions as an ODFI to maybe some of the businesses that you support, but not everyone. Because remember, you're going to be moving transactions faster. So you're going to have greater exposure to these businesses that you're passing files for. So you really want to make sure that you're comfortable with their credit rating uh, and you understand the business. This is know your customer. And are you comfortable with providing them uh, this this faster version of ACH? So um, again, there's some you know there's some things that you can take a look at here um, and consider as you think about whether or not you should be an ODFI under same day ACH. Thank you for joining me at the CU Compliance Connection, and stay tuned for future broadcasts on issues that affect your credit union. We're here to help you at the CU Compliance Connection by InfoSight.